imagine that you have um, a bread pan. I've drawn it so that the bread pan has glass sides, so you don't have to see them. But you, here's your, here's the sides of your bread pan. It's floating over some region. In this case, it's just a square. Um, and you put some dough in there, and you bake it up, right? And as it bakes up, then it creates a surface inside of your original bread pan. So you've got that, the surface here. Now, just for the sake of definite, definiteness, I've uh, plotted a particular function of x and y over the top of, my, of, of this bread pan here. So our question is to find the volume of the bread that we have, knowing, the, knowing about the base of the pan and the height of the bread at every point, we should be able to find the volume of bread. And here's our idea. What we're going to do is, um, if we go in the bottom of the pan, we're going to slice up that region in the bottom of the plant pan into um, slices this way. And then I'm going to slice in the perpendicular direction so that I've got a bunch of little rectangles here in the base of my bread pan. Now if I look at one little bread pan, one little one little uh, rectangle in the bottom of the bread pan. That rectangle has um, an area that's delta x by delta y, and I can plug in some representative point in here and get out the height. And that height should be a pretty good representation of the height of the bread throughout that small region. As long as it's a small region, then it shouldn't be too bad. So I'm going to plug in x and y some point within this small rectangle, and I'll get out. Um, the height. So I have the area of the base times the height. That should be the volume of one little tiny slice. Now since we've sliced in two directions, we're going to have to add up all the slices. Probably the easiest way to do that would be to use a double sum. So we have slices. Um, this is like maybe the first slice this way, second slice, third slice, and so on. So slices from 1 to n, and then we'll use another index to represent the slices this way. And so over this sum, we're going to, at each location, plug in f of xi, yi, multiply it by the area of the base, which would be delta xi, delta yi. Each one of these is a volume right, of bread in the ijth location here. And we're summing up all the little volumes, so that should be the total volume. Now the problem here is, of course, that's only approximate because you can see that the surface is actually changing even within one of these tiny rectangles. So to get a better and better answer to, to eliminate the approximate part, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the limit as the norm of the partition tends to zero. So I'm going to slice it up finer and finer, in other words. By the norm of partition, I mean if you look at any out of these sub-rectangles, um, we'll measure the diagonal distance. And the largest diagonal distance of all of these tiny rectangles in the bottom of the pan is going to be the norm of the partition. So if I make the largest diagonal go to 0, that's going to force all of these rectangles to get tinier and tinier. And then we'll get the actual value for the volume here. So since we did a double sum, I'm going to write that as a double sum over my region. This is a region in the xy plane. So I'll call it r for region. So I'm doing a double sum over this flat two-dimensional region of f of x, y. I could write uh, dx, dy. But at this stage, it's also common to see da. That's probably a more common notation, right? dx times dy would be a little bit of area. So we're taking a height times a little bit of area. Summing it up, we're going to get a volume. OK, that's nice. That's a Riemann sum definition of what we mean when we write um, a double integral over some region r. But if you remember from Calc 1, we use Riemann sums a lot to set up um, the solution to particular integrals. But we didn't um, actually do much computing with the Riemann sum unless we absolutely had to, because we couldn't make any progress another way. What we did in Calc 1 was to use something that was called the fundamental theorem. The fundamental theorem said, OK, if you take the limit as the norm of the rotation tends to 0 of a single sum here of f of xi delta xi, that li the limit of that Riemann sum, that's just the, the integral over the interval you partitioned of f of x dx. That's just the definition of a definite integral. But the fundamental theorem said this, 
All you have to do is find an antiderivative. Let's say capital F is the antiderivative of little f there. Then we just plug in the two endpoints. It would be nice if we could re somehow relate this area integral, this double integral over a flat 2D region, back to somehow um, integrals that we could apply the fundamental theorem to. And here's one way that we could do it. So thinking about our loaf of bread, let's slice our loaf of bread. Loaf of bread. What I've done here is to run my knife this way. All along these lines, uh, those are lines of constant x. And I've taken out every other slice so you can kind of see, but if I draw them, draw them in, I think you can kind of see a slice of bread in each of these. And so we've got our slices of bread. And uh, I just left those slices out so it'd be a little bit easier to see, but all the way back, we've got slices all the way back here. So on, so we've got a bunch of slices of bread. Well, what we could do is we could think about just a single one of those slices. If we pull it out, it looks something like this. If we could find the area of the face of that slice, right, and then multiply that slice by its thickness, that would give the volume of a single slice. Now, the area of the face here would be, we have, in this case, um, y is going from negative 1 to 1, and then we have this function of xy that determines the top. So the area of a face should be the integral from negative 1 to 1 of f of xy dy, right? For a particular slice, um, the x value is constant in this case. So then we would take the area of that face and multiply by its thickness dx and sum them all up from the very back slice to the very forward slice. So the back slice is located at location x equals negative 1 and the front slice is located at location um, x equals positive 1. And so we have this double integral. That should represent the volume as well because that makes sense, right? From calc 1 we know that's the area of the face of one slice. If you take the area of the face times the thickness, that should give you the volume of one slice. And we're just summing up all those slices from the very back slice to the very front slice. Um, in this particular case, we have this integral. Our function f of xy is 4 minus x squared minus y cubed. And then once we've done that integral, we'll integrate with respect to x. Okay. All along the face of this slice, the x value is constant because that's how we sliced it. So I'll just treat this like a constant. Notice this then is just an integral in y from calc 1. We've got um, a, a one-dimensional integral to do here. Now to do that integral, what you need to do is to come up with an antiderivative and evaluate it between the two endpoints. Now antiderivative of 4 with respect to y, because x is being held constant, right, is 4y. Antiderivative of this constant x squared would be negative x squared y. And the antiderivative of negative y cubed would be 1 quarter y to the fourth. All I have to do is evaluate that between negative 1 and 1, and that will give me the answer to this definite integral. If I plug in 1, I get 4 minus x squared minus 1 fourth. So we have 4 minus x squared minus 1 fourth. And when I plug in negative 1, I get negative 4 and plus x squared, and negative 1 to the fourth uh, is still 1, so we get negative 1 fourth. All of that now has to be integrated with respect to x, but let me simplify first. We've got the integral from negative 1 to 1 of, let's see, 4 minus minus 4 would be a total of 8. Negative x squared and another negative x squared make negative 2x squared. Now we have a negative 1 fourth minus um, Let's see, yeah, minus minus one fourth. Hmm. That's plus one fourth, yeah. Okay, so those cancel. Good. Okay, now this is another calc one integral, right? We just have to find an antiderivative with respect to x, which would be eight x and then minus two thirds x cubed. Just evaluate that between the two endpoints in x, and we should have our answer. If we plug in 1, we get 8 minus 2 thirds. And then minus, when we plug in negative 1, we get negative 8, and we get plus 2 thirds. So our answer here is going to be 16 um, 
minus 4 thirds. 16 is 48 thirds. Take away 4 thirds, and we're going to have 44 thirds for the answer. And that should be the volume if our thinking is correct. Now, there's no reason why we, we had to slice in constant x. We could have also sliced in constant y. So here I've sliced it so that the, x, the y value was always held constant. But again, you can see for our individual slices, all we've got to do is to find the area of the face of the slice, multiply that area by its thickness, which now the thicknesses are running in the y direction. So that thickness is uh, dy. And then we'll have the volume of a single slice. We'll just total those up. Now the area of a face is going to be the integral from negative 1 to 1. We're going in the x direction now because we're holding y constant. Um, our function minus 4 minus x squared minus y cubed. And integrating with respect to x this time. And that's the area of a face. Multiply that by its thickness, dy and integrate from this back slice all the way to the forward slice. So that's going to be from negative 1 to 1 in this particular example. So if we go ahead and do that, remember we just have to find an antiderivative, this time with respect to x. So we get 4x minus x squared, um, let's see, 1 third x cubed, because we're doing an antiderivative with respect to x. This is constant as far as x is concerned, right? Within a single slice, we're holding y constant as we go along the, the front of that slice. So. Um, so we just have minus y cubed x that we have to evaluate between negative 1 and 1. And that's what we're going to put in here. Let's see. When we plug in 1, we get 4 minus a third minus y cubed. So plugging in 1 for x gives 4 minus a third minus y cubed minus when we plug in negative 1, we get negative 4 and negative 1 cubed would be negative 1 times negative 1 third would be plus 1 third. And uh, put a negative 1 here and we get plus y cubed. Okay, all of that's got to be integrated from negative 1 to 1 dy. Before we do, let's just collect like terms. We have 4 minus minus 4, that's 4 plus 4 is 8. And we have negative 1 third and a minus 1 third. So those cancel. Oh no, they don't. Negative one third minus one third is negative two thirds, better. And then we have negative y cubed minus um, y cubed is going to be um, is going to be minus two y cubed here. Okay, we just have to integrate that dy. Of course, that's an integral from calc one. Let's see, eight thirds. 8 is 24 thirds, minus 2 thirds would be 22 thirds. So we just have to integrate from negative 1 to 1. 22 thirds minus 2y cubed dy. Let's go ahead and find an antiderivative, which would be 22 thirds. We're integrating with respect to y, so 22 thirds y minus 1 half y to the fourth between negative 1 and 1. And when we plug in, um, when we plug in, um, 1, we get 22 thirds, and plug in 1 here, minus a half, and then when we plug in negative 1, we get negative 22 thirds, and we still get a minus 1 half here, so we get 44 thirds, and we have minus 1 half plus a half, those cancel, so 44 thirds for the answer. You'll notice that the answer was the same both times. So before we got 44 thirds and after we got 44 thirds. And this is always true. It makes sense, right? It shouldn't matter how you slice your bread if you calculate the volume um, either way. By adding up slices from one direction or slicing the other direction, you should get the same area. And this result is known as Fubini's theorem. So Fubini's theorem takes um, two-dimensional integrals and relates them back to uh, one-dimensional integrals. It just says if you want to find this this thing, which is the limit of a Riemann sum, you just need to integrate, right? You just need to take area of a face of a slice times its thickness and sum all those slices up. It doesn't matter which way you cut it, um, you'll get the same area. So that that always works.